Yeah, it's, it just takes the standard, you know, measurements that the logs will do for you, or depending on what system you're running. Mm -hmm. And if you get SightScope, SightScope is a product that you can use in production where you're monitoring your, it, it, is it up, is it fast kind of thing. You just click yeah. on something, you hit once, it comes back. Yeah. You can also use the tool for monitoring. It, 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 it's the health of your server. It tells you how high the CPU is and all that. So you can plug that in the load order, and that's usually what I do too. Yeah. Since I'm lucky enough to get all these tools to use. <laughs> But otherwise, what you can do with LoadRunner is you can grab the perf mons, have them dump it in a file for you, and import it into LoadRunner too. Or, you know, just grab the perf mons and grab it yourself and look. But what also is, is, is helpful when you're running your test, if you can get a sysadmin looking at stuff while you're testing and be on the phone with them or whatever, IMing them, and say, okay, I'm going to start, and then you, you know, call out 100 users, 200 users. And then the sysadmin goes, well, CPU is too high to stop or whatever. So I've done that too, where you just, it's a collaborative effort. Because if it happens in production, that guy's going to be fixing it anyway, right? <laughs> so they're, they're ready to, they're more than happy to break QA and, and not get it breaking production. I think we didn't talk about creating the scenario in mind, but what we, what the same slide we were on. This tool is called the analysis tool. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, what you can see in the controller, there's a lot of stuff that you can. Uh, it'll, it creates its own little database and logs all the information in there. And you can merge graphs together. So if you want to see the users and the CPU next to overlapping each other, you can do that. Um, it has the, the first report is. All the transactions you scripted for, home page, flight info page, purchasing, their response times, how many of them passed and how many failed, like how many threw a 500 error or didn't have the text that you were expecting. And then at the bottom you have um, your responses, you know, the 200s, 500s, how many of those you got. Then you can just start adding graphs and then showing in a graph form the response time for the home page. You can just show someone, you know, and then you can spit it out in a word report, basically. So you do you use the analysis tool to figure out what data you want to present. You can do it in Word, you can do it in a, a web page, it'll let you export it to a web page with its own folder. So basically that's what the tool's used for. And you can go through and check all your server monitors and response times. And if you, um, the failure rates, you can, it'll just graph that too. So sometimes one of the requirements you'll get is that you have to have less than a 5% failure rate. Sometimes they have a bug in the system, they don't know what it is, but they can live with it. So you can show how your load, how you go up in users, and then the, there's a green line for pass and a red line for fail. If it starts going up, then all kinds of stuff is. And also, we'll break down the page for you. So if you have your home page and you have uh, let's say I have a Sudi Conchali website and has a picture of me. And this has some text, or maybe like a form to fill out, or you know, email me or send me your contact information. Basically, so we have three things on the web page. It'll tell you how fast that image load, how fast the form fill loaded, and it'll it'll have it into like a bar graph. You pay all the markers in here. <laughs> you would think they would put the thingy in the front. Different views it'll give you. So you can actually, one time this happened to me, they had a a picture. So it'll, it'll show you things like this is the network traffic, this is the server, and that was, you know, it'll break that down for you. And then it'll also break down, you know, here's the whole shell of the web page. This uh, hit pick took this long, this little image took that long, this little image took that long, and break that down for you. But I ran into a scenario once where there was a home page and we were trying to get the response time down on that thing. And there was a picture of a curved edge like this. And it was surrounding a, a box with information in here. They forgot to compress this and it was adding a whole second. So th that's the kind of stuff you can pull out of there too. Yeah, um for uh, Firefox, also it's called NetExplit, that's part of Firebase. Oh, 
do that too for you. But not under load. So, unless you just do introduction. Then you have real load, right? <laughs> then you'll have uh, real users at, at the real time. Um, are we all about time now? You got about five more minutes, or you can wrap up if you want early or whatever. Well, we kind of moved on to, to questions, so. Okay. Read it through. Good job, Susan. Let's pick some stuff out on Facebook. All right, cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Susan.